Hey guys, you may have seen my recent Christmas unboxing video where I showed some items I picked up recently, including this guy, which is a Suncor VP401 Video Pro Test Pattern Generator. I want to give it a whirl in this video. Full disclosure, I already have plugged it in and I know it turns on, but I have not checked the output. I also tried to charge the battery, I let it sit for a few hours and it did not. So we're going to have to plug this in to use it. And I pulled out this little Sony Color TV because it's got a bunch of color patterns and I want to see what they look like. I'm also thinking that an old black and white TV maybe can't handle some of these more modern test patterns. So this is does a wide variety of things. It's rather sophisticated. So it can do HDTV, RGB, S-Video Composite, NTSC, RF. And imagine with the right adapters, all manner of computer monitors. Now, I got lucky, and I got this for a whopping $49. Yeah, it's missing a bunch of the adapter cables, but it would be for computer-type devices and things I don't work on, so I'm not that... Concerned about that, I'm lucky or glad that I got this power adapter, but uh, did not include the power cord, so you do need one of these standard computer type plugs on it. And as someone pointed out, uh, there's another brand that this is sold under. It looks darn near identical to it. So I don't know that Suncor even made these. I do have the charge light here, but uh, it's not charging. So I would do want to pop this open and see what's in there. So it would be cool to have this full portable. It does have a backlight. There we go. Now, I, was already, <laughs> I already got clued in that the menu is not so great, and I can confirm that. I was looking around on some forums, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a little obtuse. So let's get this guy turned on. Ah, uh, so signal type. So at first I thought, well, i got to choose one of these four, right? And then it hops to another menu, and I wasn't quite seeing what I wanted. Then I realized, oh, there's up and down arrow keys. There are more choices than these four. So we want to actually... Uh, so we want NTSC PAL, and then, okay, NTSC. But what we really want to do is keep scrolling down, and we see RF channel 2346. And that's all you get to choose from. It's got to be one of those four channels. So let's do good old channel three. And let's hook this up to the TV. Use one of these handy speed connectors. There are no threads on it. They just slide on. Those will tend to slide off when you don't want them to, but I think we'll be okay. Ooh, hot damn, look at that. Yeah, that's why I wanted to use a more modern TV, because that's... <laughs> That is not your typical test pattern. Focus there. Check that out. So what are we looking at? Let's click the button for pattern. Okay, so if you do format, you can choose the channel pattern. It's on the focus pattern. So rather complex images there rotated at different angles, so you can check the focus all around. All right. I have not done any servicing to this side, and I can. Always knew things were off a little bit. The pictures tilted a little bit and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so let's go to the very top because there's multiple screens of patterns. So the first one is M SMPTE bar. Hey, that sure looks familiar. That is your standard modern color bar test pattern. Isn't that pretty? So I'm starting to work on some color TVs and I'd shown a little portable the vintage test pattern generator, and yeah, it kind of works, but if I'd known that this was readily available, I just would have gone with this in the first place, because this makes some really nice looking test patterns, I can see so far. There's a nice uh, grayscale staircase, horizontal staircase, bluish plug. I've heard this before, but I don't know exactly what it means. And it's, it's flashing sure you video techs out there know what that means. This is the needle test pattern. Wow. 
Yeah, I'm, not a, I'm not a video engineer, so I don't know quite what that means, but it looks like this set has some issues when you get to the right hand side where it's and that's what part of these test patterns do, and that's what vintage TVs, I'm talking TVs from the fours have a really hard time, is the really harsh transitions. So some of these signals are going to be AC coupled, it takes the capacitor a little while to recover and, and, and whatnot. But uh, if you really want to put something through its paces, it should be able to handle this. High low track, overscan, oh, that's cool. Rather jittery. Come back. There we go. So I'm guessing on the left side there's some bars off to the left we can't see. On the right we can see them. You see a little bit of green and right up here. You only see red on the bottom. Sharpness. Ooh. Oh, there's some really fine striations up there. I think that's the multi burst pattern, sort of. That the set hasn't been serviced. All right, next screen we got window one, window two, raster. That's just a full on white square, I guess. Uh, whoa. Oh, and then you can adjust IRE. IR. <laughs> this is 100 IRE. This is 20 IRE, and back to 100. I forget what that means. <laughs> I think it has to do with like units of grayscale or something like that. Uh, decode adjust. Ooh. Decode check. Little color bars. Ramp. Crosshatch. Well, this would be more useful for black and white sets. Convergence, ooh, it's a fancy convergence pattern. Linearity, ooh, that's much better than my usual crosshatch with a circle in the middle because we got the four corners. So we get the corners all lined up too. Anamorphic. Nice. I've seen that before, but I didn't know what it was called. Regulate. You can see how this set's having trouble. <laughs> like on the right hand side, I imagine an early black and white set would just lose its mind with something like this. Checker, ooh. Yeah. Get some horizontal linearity issues with this TV, huh? Good old multi burst. Gauges resolution. You should be able to see striations even if far out to the right, but that would mean you had like full video bandwidth, which most sets do not. Focus, that's what we started out with. And split gray. Ooh, I like the animation. So you get dual grayscale bars going. You know, low to high, high to low. And that's all I know about this device, but there are other menu options here. We have gating, don't know what that means, but we got a whole mess of options. Test. Uh, okay. That seemed to have killed it. Kind of hoping it would like rotate through test patterns when I did that. And maybe it will. And you can learn formats, got kind of options. Obviously, I read the manual. I don't want to screw this thing up, so I'm not going to start blindly tweaking with settings. But uh, there we go. What a cool device! Uh, I know these cost a small fortune when they were new, like thousands of dollars. And some people are still listing them for thousands of dollars on eBay. Uh, but there are some bargains out there. The cheaper ones, sometimes it's just this bare unit or it's missing a bunch of accessories. If that's okay with you as it was for me, yeah, i try to find one for less than 100 bucks. But if you want one that's like full-blown, like barely used or maybe never used, uh, expect to pay a bit more because you can imagine there's a lot of folks interested in these. Your vintage gaming people computer, vintage computing people, vintage arcade game people. Um, <laughs> let's finish this off with 
something I find amusing that I see all the time. Unless this display looks a little weird, there's a little bubbly, there's some scratches in it and stuff. I'm pretty sure nobody ever took the piece of plastic <laughs> off of this display, even though this thing is, well, probably 20 years old. Yep. Oh, look at that. So I have a virtually brand new one now, because somebody... Never took that off. Whoever never took it off, thank you, because you preserved it very nicely all these years. So, actually, let's do one last thing. Let's take these two screws out the back and see what kind of battery this guy gets. Because if I can make this fully portable, man, I'll be using this all the time on projects. Because what a handy thing that is. And it works seemingly very well, and I'm guessing those patterns are a lot more accurate than the cheapo portable analog um, generators. Uh, but before we open it up, something hot off the presses. I was uh, chatting with a colleague who also works on vintage TVs about a set he was really having trouble with. He was getting terrible reception. And I think out of frustration, because he tried just about everything else, he checked out the ballon he was using. And he went so far as to break it open and find out there was no matching transformer inside. There were just wires going straight through. <laughs> supposed to be a transformer here to go from 75 single-ended to 300 ohm balanced output uh, so if you're having trouble and you bought some cheapo adapters transformers off of Amazon um, and you might want to bust one open if you buy a bunch of them to sacrifice one of them to make sure that they are the real deal All right, let's get inside this guy. I hope it's just these two screws. Think there's some adhesive foam tape that there in the batteries. Here we go. Wow, they are they are easily replaceable. Assuming one can find nickel metal hydride, and that's what was in here originally. Some double A nickel metal hydride. Well, I thought they were just gonna be like some custom battery pack soldered right in or something. This is assuming I can find some of these. 1.2 volt, minimum 2,000 milliamp hour. All right. Well, now I know what to look for. So, yeah, not much in here. This is new enough that it's all custom. So we got a Xilinx Spartan, probably a Gatorade, and a good old 80 C31 microcontroller made by Philips. Analog devices, something or another, probably digital analog converter. Silicon image chip down here in the lower left. Yeah, basically, a bunch of fancy surface mount stuff. Just looking for a year. 03, 47, 2003, 47th week. That sounds right, based on everything I've read. So, there you go. A very cool, a very handy device if you're working on anything video related and you need to adjust it. Um, unless you want one in super nice condition with all the accessories, I, I'd hunt around for a bargain. But, uh, there you go. So, hope you guys found this interesting. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.